Okay, I need to apologize because I got a lot of pushback from my video where I talked about the only thing that works on narcissists or boundaries and self-worth. I got a lot of people saying I was victim blaming and I take that very seriously because people who have been abused are the last people that I ever wanna feel like I'm hurting them. So I wanna apologize if anything I said came across in a callous or insensitive way. Whatever I said, if you heard, well, if you would have had boundaries and self-respect, then you wouldn't have been abused. That is not at all what I meant to say. That's wrong. And I'm so sorry if it came across that way. That was a video where I was responding to someone else that kept saying, well, nothing works with narcissists. And the problem is when I hear that, it sounds like we're just accepting defeat for the person who's being abused, right? I mean, nothing works. I guess they're just doomed but we know that isn't true. So of course we condemn the abuse as we should and we tell them to leave, right? Just leave anyone who shows any signs of abuse, emotional, physical, or psychological. We can all agree on that. But unfortunately that doesn't prevent future abuse. And I know that because I get emails from people all the time and they got out of toxic narcissistic relationship years ago. And now years later, they find themselves in another one again and they're reaching out to me for help. And we have to ask ourselves why. Why are they in another narcissistic relationship? It's not coincidence. It's because the abuse feels familiar to them. And you would agree in every codependent narcissistic relationship, one partner has very low self-worth, right? And I'm very empathetic towards that, having struggled with that myself. And healing and growing from this absolutely involves condemning abusers. I will continue to do that. But it also involves accountability and self-reflection and exploring what role we played, however minimal, in the dynamics we continue to find ourselves in. That doesn't mean they deserve to be abused. You never deserve to be abused, ever. Even if you ignored all the red flags and you didn't set any healthy boundaries and they eventually hurt you, you did not deserve to be hurt. I don't care if it's physical, emotional, or psychological, it's traumatic and it's destructive and you didn't deserve it. But my goal is to help you in any way possible be set up for the most fulfilling, healthiest relationship possible in the future. And that can't happen if you don't view yourself as lovable. That can't happen if you can't set healthy boundaries and standards. That can't happen if you people please and neglect your own needs. That's not me blaming you for any abuse. That's me trying to inspire you and love you, knowing what it's like to abandon yourself in a relationship. I can tell you personally, nobody can fight your demons for you. Nobody can fix your shame for you. It's always an inside job. Until you explore yourself and understand yourself and have compassion for yourself and start on a healing journey yourself, you'll repeat the same toxic patterns, but with a new partner. Christine Langley says, we repeat what we don't repair. It's not a coincidence, it's a pattern. Your trauma isn't your fault. The way they treated you in the past isn't your fault. But healing from it and setting yourself up for success in the future is your responsibility. The truth is I wish you knew how valuable and worthy of love you are. You're worthy of respect and reciprocation and kindness. I wish you didn't equate setting a boundary to them leaving you. I wish you weren't scared of abusive people abandoning you. I wish they didn't hurt you and I wish you weren't so familiar with being hurt because that breaks my heart. And I know even though we feel like we're being a loving person, all that stuff ultimately only leads to your heart being broken as well. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you in the next one.